Hey, everybody. How's it going? This is Rob Turley, your host of Down the Rabbit Hole podcast, brought to you by White Rabbit Intel, a place where you can hyper-target your market and predict who's most likely to become your next best customer and is a best fit to reach out to before needing to engage with them, right? So super exciting stuff. Now I'd like to get started. Today, I've got someone who I think a lot of people will be interested in, no matter if you're a C-suite, if you're a manager, if you're a senior person, if you're just a base level employee, doesn't matter. Because the ultimate question of B2B right now around marketing, advertising, selling, it's all transforming is TikTok. What the fuck is it? That, that literally, I have no idea. I, I don't understand it. I don't know why people waste their time watching like eight second videos that, that have no meaning to them. I, I just, I do not understand the application. I refuse to download it because I don't want China to take my data. But it looks like I'm gonna have to end up creating a business account. Now, today I have Will Aitken. He is a master or close to a TikTok um, you know, influencer, right? He's, he's good at what he does with that. I don't understand it at all, but uh, no, he's a pretty bright guy. Not pretty bright. He's a very bright guy. And uh, he does a really good job at training people on sales tips and different types of processes, practices on TikTok, which has actually gotten him a couple hundred thousand followers um, in a following, which is incredible because he's teaching business based stuff and it's it's creating inbound for him. So, Will, if you don't mind, please uh, introduce yourself. Give us a little idea of what you do. Hello, Rob. Thank you so much for that intro there. Yeah, my name is uh, my name is Will. Uh, I currently work as a sales manager at a company called Sales Feed by Vidyard, uh, at, and that is a full-time sales content creation role. As you just mentioned, my background uh, is originally in sales. I was working as an account executive last year. I opened up a TikTok account and started posting about sales content, sales humor, sales advice, and it just took off from that. Uh, since then, I've started up a second account for my employer, Sales Feed, and built a second entirely corporate brand it's actually grown and surpassed my own personal brand on TikTok. I've done it twice now. So I'd consider myself an expert when it comes to building B2B brands and community, uh, especially when it comes to TikTok. You know, it's not by accident when you can replicate it. <laughs> That's why I tell everyone. Some people say right. TikTok's good luck. Uh, yeah. 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 One is just once, but two is a pattern. Not much. One or three times. You know, just throw another one at me. <laughs> three is the magic number. I love it. That's fantastic. No, it's exciting, though. And, um, yeah, they must be very happy around the team. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it, obviously TikTok's not the one thing I focus on. I'd consider someone like myself, like a, a dedicated content creator is something that a lot of companies are doing right now. The title evangelist is popping up more and more. Um, and it really comes down to being a voice, a face of, of a brand, so. Right, right. It's like uh, we're discussing right now for myself too. Because we, we coach CEO at my company, right? Uh, though maybe chief visionary officer because I'm a hype man and love talking about new innovative shit and see how everything connects, right? So who knows? I don't know. There's a lot of things that are shifting in the market. Co-CEO is even just a new idea, but people like 3M are doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. The more uh, progressive enterprises and startups, uh, like, which is interesting because in the middle, that's not really happening, which is kind of weird, right? But yeah, mm -hmm. I'd like to get into it. Now, what did you originally start doing on TikTok that, that got you interested in it, number one, and number two, that started actually getting views? Who's watching it? Why are they liking it? Yeah. I've got a couple of answers to this question. Uh, originally, I just started posting on TikTok because it was fun, a bit of a hobby. Uh, I would finish work, you know, and then I, I would want to go and create a, a piece of content, a video about something I learned that day, or something that was funny and relatable that happened to me. And generally, the, the sales advice and sales humor stuff was pretty in line, both and performed. And I felt creating a mix of those two things was great because it gave me variety in creating it, which means I wasn't getting bored, but it was also giving the audience something to connect with as well. For my personal brand, things really took off when uh, I, I pivoted into it, well, pivoted a little bit into some career advice, how to develop your career as an SDR coming into an AE, or even how to get your first job as an SDR. On the corporate brand stuff, when I created sales feeds, TikTok account, the stuff that really took off was just small tidbits of advice, things that might be quite obvious to veteran sellers or even B2B senior candidates and sales leaders, uh, objection handling, uh, cold call openers, um, discovery techniques. You know, it's funny you say that because covering the basics, almost every influencer I've spoken to, keep it general, cover the basics because it's something that's familiar. It's something yeah. they can agree to if they know it. It's something that's very useful if they didn't. And it's like a no brainer, the fact that you just taught them something. And it's attractive to everybody because it makes them feel smart. 
Yeah, it, it's funny. If you put something more complex on there, like I post a lot of sophisticated stuff. So I've got a lot of friendlies that like are obsessed with my content. A lot of people fucking hate me. Mm. Uh, that's the way I like it. Right. So very niche audience. So you love me or you hate me. But with what you're doing, if you really want to get that coverage and a large followership, it's you have to follow that generalized and more obvious type of thing. Because a lot of people don't think about the foundation stuff either actively. And it reminds them. Mm. And that's value. And that's why people hit the follow button. Right. Um, the other thing I'll layer on top of that is like TikTok is pretty new and there's not a super niche audience available yet for grades on that. So just by niching down to B2B sales, that's already pretty niche as far as TikTok. Yeah, you are your niche on TikTok, which is interesting because everybody sees everything. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, the, the hashtags can take you so far. So you put in front of people who maybe engaged with that content in the past. But it's so young that a lot of a lot of people aren't even aware that, that there is a sales niche on TikTok. So sometimes you just have to put it out there, hope it finds them. And the general advice stuff is that's that's what's going to get you in front of those people. Right. Any widely used thing like that, even Reddit, you know, yeah. it has it has a sales uh, like R slash. Right. So everything has really anywhere has a sales type of a, a vibe to it. No matter. It just depends on where you go. Hashtags are how you navigate through any type of social media. People follow them. I've never personally followed a hashtag in my entire life. But people follow them all the time. You you said earlier what's TikTok all about and why is it um, the good thing about TikTok is it, it will know you tell it the hashtags. People don't necessarily search for hashtags on TikTok. It uses them though to show your content to people who have engaged with that type of topic in the past. So if someone's already engaged with hashtag sales tips and you use hashtag sales tips, then you're almost telling it show this to people who have liked this stuff in the past. So really smart use of that will help you narrow down in niche. Otherwise, as you mentioned earlier, TikTok, very young audience on that. Yeah, it algorithmically niches too. But you know that, uh, what is it? I forget the actual stat on it, but it's something It's something in the high percentage, like somewhere between like 60 to 80%. Can't remember the actual one. Don't quote me on this, of course. But I think it's like somewhere between 60 to 80% of all buyers right now are millennials. Because they're so apt on uh, digital technology, even, even like though there's a senior person that's in their 50s, they just have that millennial do it. They take care of it. So most buyers right now are millennials, and that's the audience. It's millennials and Gen Zers. It's mainly Gen Zers on that platform. But I mean, think about it. There are 1.2 billion people on TikTok right now, which is absolutely batshit crazy. It's what Vine should have been, honestly. I loved Vine. But that died so quick because Facebook bought it and killed it immediately because it was a threat to their existence. Bastards. Oh. <laughs> they realized, oh, all of our users are leaving. Why? Vine, buy them out, kill them. I'm surprised yeah. they haven't done that to TikTok, but maybe they have, but they just they, they refuse to sell it because they the history repeats itself, right? Then Vine had something they could have held on to that and probably been bigger. But you mentioned sure, that. how do you do your call? I'm interested. I know I'm just switching on this, but like calls to action on TikTok. What does that yeah. even mean? Do people follow them? Uh, <laughs> I very rarely use any kind of call to action in any of my videos, unless it's an actual ad, you know, where I want them to do something. Go, hey, well, a call to action thing. doesn't say like, oh, download this thing or whatever else. It's asking yeah. the audience of something, even if it's just an ask to have them think about something. Like, why don't you just think about this like tonight when you're, when you know, when you have free time? What, that is a call to action, technically. It's any yeah. ask. Yeah. I've, I've, to be honest, not given it much active thought. I think when you start asking people for something or to do something, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's intent for me, and maybe other people are doing it. I very rarely. Well, a ton of influencers, it. the largest mistake influencers make where they don't monetize their audience is that they don't ask their listeners, users, or viewers to do anything. Mm -hmm. They will because they're obsessed with you. They'll do whatever you want. That's why companies pay influencers millions of dollars just for product placement. I use the shampoo, and it's so fantastic. Their sales just went up like five percent overnight literally yeah. so if you're not asking your audience or something i just found a giant gap and i'm about to make you a whole lot of money you're right you got me thinking wrong yeah i know a lot of influencers so i'm just not one of them because uh i'm too controversial that <laughs> right that well i mean that's what this is all about now if you're not asking your audience of something what type of results have you seen just from creating content without the ask well i'm going to try and split the the, the, the audience a little bit. So I have in, in some cases done sponsorships for my personal account. And all honesty, with my personal account, I haven't been super intentional with it because I've really been experimenting. And as I mentioned before, 
It's been something I've been doing for fun, which I think comes through in the authenticity of the content. Now, having managed a second account for a brand, the goal really is their conversions. And what we want to do, and with the way we look at that audience, the TikTok is it's a TikTok follower. We don't think that as the same value as a LinkedIn or a YouTube follower. Oh, There's, agreed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because it could be anybody who's anybody with a pulse. Exactly. Right. And the, the audience is very generous with organic reach. So you can build a huge following in TikTok in a fraction of the time it takes to build on LinkedIn, YouTube, but it's not super captive because sometimes they won't see your content if you post well, it. Well, it's highly disposable content that's usually about 10 seconds. There's, yeah. there's not much to it. 10 to, to, to 40 seconds. Right. So what we've been doing there is really using that audience to try and convert them to our other channels rather than hard convert them. Like, oh, just, so you're using it as like a switching station or like a means to something else. Think of it like as like a layer on top of the funnel that we already had with YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, even. It's a bigger funnel that feed, and then we're trying to get those people to subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on LinkedIn. And then that's where we can probably convert them into a proper lead. Yeah, that makes sense. I should start posting like, you know, 10, 15 second videos from this podcast on a TikTok because people would love this shit. You just grab like the teaser video, throw it on there, bam, you got yourself like, you know, a couple thousand listen. Shit, gotta do it. It's gotta happen. I'm doing it now. I'm making it happen. Yeah. Or I would One thing I'll say is that the people who have been posting podcast content, that stuff doesn't do as well on TikTok because it's a different beast entirely. A lot of the content that performs there is made for TikTok. And it's the good news. So I've noticed personally, a lot of B2B brands that approach TikTok aren't, they're doing what you just mentioned. They're getting webinar, they're getting podcast content, they're getting other content, and then they're reposting on TikTok. But TikTok is such a short time to value that you need like a freaking, it's a portrait for one as well. But you want to, you've almost got to create content for TikTok for it to be successful on TikTok. And that means literally going on and creating a video specifically for TikTok. You can say what you just said in this podcast. Just make it on TikTok and then use. So it's an extra investment, but you can use that content on other channels. So then once oh, you well, like, what, what, what if I just like took a video of me like pterodactyl screeching at my cat and then said, download this podcast? Look, it's not going to reach any salespeople. Well, no, I'm just I'm just saying, like, what what if you, you did that and then you just put a download link? Would people actually download it? If they I thought the video was hella funny, would they download that? Download this podcast? They wouldn't even know what it's about. Is how, how? But what I'm asking is, how important is context? I think it's hella important. Like, I you you got to think about it from the, the the eyes of the viewer. How if I watched a video, I could it'd be easy. It's so easy to keep scrolling. To to, to take an action on something like that. I didn't even know you scrolled on on. TikTok. I, I thought it was like you press next, like Snapchat or something. It's literally just just flicking the finger. That's why like people like it because you feel like you're learning something or getting quick lost, but you don't actually retain much of the information at all. Oh, so they made like an infinite scroll, like full screen video platform. I know nothing about this app. I'm not even kidding. like I'm not sure. Yeah, well, we probably went a bit too deep too quickly. That I mean, it's portrait video. It's just like Vine, but you can go up to uh, well, actually you can go up to three minutes, but most videos are under thirty seconds. That makes and sense. If you want someone to watch a video, you need to hook them because otherwise they'll just keep scrolling. Yeah, what is average video watch time right now? Like seven seconds, something like that? Probably about that, yeah. It depends what the video is, but. Man, I couldn't imagine living like that. I it's just, that's crazy. Like, it's just, you can focus, focus. <laughs> I don't understand. But uh, okay, now when you're creating this content, what keeps people on the, the video? What, what What is it that you're doing? Like, so you said there needs to be like, it needs to be a, a TikTok video. What does that mean? Yeah. So, I mean, I'll give you an example. You need to, the time to value is super short. And a TikTok video is literally me. I've done tons. They're always different. So my personal one is literally me mostly just talking to camera. And I'll do a hook. Like, this is the one thing you need to do if you want to get a sales job. Boom. They'll stay for three seconds. That hook will make them stay for the remaining 27. And then I'll get the tip. You start with the hook, like so, similar to like a uh, like uh, an article that you would post on like a like a press release site or something like that, where it's got to have the hook. And then if they see the title, they like it. They see like a little blurb about that title underneath, and then boom, they click read more. And then you better have the entire summary of the story in the first paragraph, otherwise they're gone. Yeah, you got no time to do anything else, and it's literally you can probably share one tip in that time because if you go longer than that, TikTok won't show your video to people. It's literally like got to be under thirty seconds almost. 
what what does like TikTok's algorithm? Do you know anything about their algorithm? Just from experience, like how it works. If you put a longer video, it gets less views no matter what. Generally, yeah. Even even if you get lots of engagement, um, the longer the video, the, the it's literally decreased straight down in terms of the number of just impressions you're going to get from it. What's the sweet spot? I find well, you could the the sweet spot it changes, but you can literally do a seven second video is the most optimal length for a TikTok like mine right just like we talked about seven seconds was like the, yeah yeah but, interesting but in much, that time, you can't even get that, that much information out in seven seconds it's crazy some people literally just take a video of something interesting and then write a paragraph that takes seven seconds to read on that and over the top of it and then guess what you're watching it, you're listening to it and then it's looped tiktok just count you've got you one view so it's automatically looping and therefore it's getting more views. You've got more watch time percentage wise. So show it to more people. So that's one oh. half that we do it. It compounds. That's kind of wild. Yeah. What, what, what type of message are you putting out there? That So you, you say that you're doing sales tips and stuff like that. But for like Vidyard, for example, since it's a corporate account, what are you actually talking about that's that's attractive to people for that? Just literally sales tips and sales humor. And I also the old trend as well. Um, I gave one the other day about what to say when someone says they'll think about it. It's just a sales tip because we're trying to build a SaaS sales audience so we can convert them to YouTube, which is probably going to be a more intentful message that it's going to want them to to show intent or move. No, think about it means I don't understand the value. Yeah, that makes sense. Not a lot of people know that. It's uh, I'll think about it. Oh, he's going to think about it. No, that means yeah. either no or, or they, they don't understand or, your value. Or they're not interested at all, and you should probably call it out and be like, hey. Like, often when people tell me they, they need to think about it, they don't. They've already made their mind up. Have we missed something, or are you just being nice to me? Uh, yeah, the one that's always a, a mystery is like, you know, I need to have a chat with my team because they do. Yeah. But then are they? You know, <laughs> like that's the thing. That's the ultimate in my mind. I did one on that the other day as well. And I mean, with this, like, I, a lot of people are sharing sales tips on there now, like, you know, the big names that we know on in the B2B space already think like Dan Lowe, Grant Cardone, big YouTube giants who give very B2C relevant advice. They're quite, they're huge on that. They've got millions of followers. Um, so to make it different and unique, I created this thing called the sales help desk where I dressed up as a help desk agent, sat in front of a green screen, and then yeah. to receive a call from someone who was like, hey, my wife just told me she needs to, or like my my person, just my, my decision maker just told me they need to talk to my te their team about this. And I said, and then I give the advice, oh, if someone tells you they need to talk to your team, get out ahead of that and be like, oh, based on what we discussed today, what do you think your team, what do you think your team would want to know? Um, exactly. How can I best prepare you for that, for that conversation? Or what is that conversation going to look like? Take me through it. Yeah. And that, that, so that was a 20 second clip of me in a office cubicle pretending that I'm giving, it's an actual sales help desk. That was like, the hook on that one is that like, well, what a sales help desk? What's this guy talking about? So that was how I tried to bring it unique rather than just going, this is what you should do. It, I made it sting. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you made the uh, the setting real. Yeah, yeah that's, that's interesting. That's very interesting. And then when you're talking to, uh, like, do, do you take more of like a B2C type of an approach on that, even though your business, because if, if it, you need to appeal to people and hit their limbic system, meaning emotionally appeal to them as a human being and as an individual. No one's interested in other businesses' shit. They're interested in people, and then it converts to business stuff. Like personal brand is the new brand. Um, and so when you're appealing to people as a brand, Vidyard in this case, are you speaking to them as a consumer or as a buyer? Or like a B2B buyer is what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I don't reference anything about buying them buying I rarely even talk about video at all sales feed on there. It's mainly just straight to entertainment or value, straight to tips. And as you mentioned, people buy from people. It's why it helps to have someone like me be the face of it. Although I bring other people in, that's the advantage of being a media brand. I can bring in like a, a tip from someone that we spoke to on a podcast um, and bring that in and format that in a way that's going to do well or bring in Tyler Lassard, who's done a short video for us here and that. But for the most part, I can just myself take it in direction and kind of make it an extension of myself or my brand. Uh, yeah, okay, and what what percentage increase in like inbound have you uh, seen since you started doing this with Vidyard? We started this, so just a, it's a sales feed account. Vidyard has its own TikTok account that someone else manages that doesn't perform as well because uh, 
I didn't manage the account basically. So there was a few things that didn't go as well as they could. The SalesFeed account, SalesFeed is a media brand that Vidyard has started. That specifically, we've generated over 2,000 clicks and those have gone to places like YouTube. Those are the ones we can track. We know based on the fact that there are people telling us that they've found us through TikTok, that there are a lot more people than that who've found other channels that we're on. And that's the repeat impressions that we're getting on TikTok. If we hit them three times with a sales educate ed ed entertainment video, a couple of sales tips, they start going, what is sales feed? What is that? And they start inquiring, looking on YouTube and seeing our brand all over the place. That's interesting. I would never do that. That's too much work. Interesting. So I'm like the weird outlier where I don't fall in line with any of the actual shit that goes on. That's like trends and everything where it's just like I do deep research based off of actual questions. Um, or it's just like those communities don't interest me. So if someone like me were to create content for TikTok, do you think it would fail? Serious question, because there's a lot of intellectuals who, who listen to this podcast. No. Because how do you categorize failing if it reaches 10 people who are perfectly inside your ICP, right? Like, I, I think it wouldn't perform as well as because it doesn't appeal to the masses. You just told me it was niche. It's niche content, right? It's for people who are more intellectual, generally speaking. It's not everyone. Um, whereas the more you appeal to, the more the less you niche down, the more people are going to see it and more people are going to resonate with it. And it sounds like right. you, you make relatively niche content for a very small subset of people. And based on the conversation we had about like who listens to the podcast, a lot of those people may not even be on TikTok yet. So yeah, that's why I want to have this conversation with you actually, because it's important and uh, it's the way everything's moving. The industry is moving. It's becoming a short attention span, super millennial uh, experience. Uh, so how can people better prepare? That that's the that's the question. I mean, if someone were to create uh, a, a business TikTok account right now, what would you recommend to them? Like, what what's like the kit that they need to get started? Quality doesn't really matter on TikTok. People just use their phone and the camera and the, the, the mic. So don't worry about that. The things I would really recommend looking at is one niche down. If you're going to be B two B, you're definitely going to want to niche down because B two B is a niche in itself, and there's probably niches beyond that. Two, I'd look for content that's already been created within that niche. Look for creators who are already posting about sales. What worked for them? What hashtags were they using? Is the audience that they have the audience you want to get in front of? How much can you imitate from them? Not copy, imitate. Like, what are their hooks? What do they say in the first five seconds of their video? What are their best performing videos? Do they use any trends or sounds? Hashtags, what are they using to target their audience? So I'd be looking really specifically, if I was going to start a new TikTok account today, or for, if I was a different person, let's say, I'd literally just go out and try and find this content that's been done before. If it hasn't, find something as close as you can and then build your own niche, essentially, and be a, a trailblazer uh, and create it for yourself. Right. Yeah, that, that's a long game, though, for sure. Oh, huge. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to do that right now with a hashtag. It's it's getting somewhere, but yeah. it, that's the long game, 100%. So anybody listening, use hashtag high volume is dead because it is. <laughs> uh, okay. And then, so when they get started and they start seeing that following grow and everything, since you weren't using like call to actions and you're trying to convert them to another platform, which makes sense, how would you recommend people start getting people to go somewhere you want them to go from those videos? Like, what is the tipping point on that? Yeah. So I didn't use call to actions and I still don't make enough use of them on my personal channel. But on the sales feed channel, we allude to the idea that there is more content available elsewhere. If we share one sales tip, I hint at the fact that there is 10 more on YouTube. But wait, there's more, one of those. Yeah. Not 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 quite as as obvious as that, but like like I'll hint to the fact like, hey, there's more here. Yeah. Right, right. I, I was just making a joke. I was just yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, to be honest, it'd be pretty, pretty funny. That's pretty sales. For 14 right. payments of 1995, you can get yourself I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah, no, funny. Gimmicky. People yeah. love the gimmicky stuff, though, man, is what I've realized is that, you know, I tried uh, to make things sophisticated myself. And the less sophisticated you get, the simpler you get, the more gimmicky it is, the more people actually go into it. And I'm talking people who are like, you know, up there, too. It's kind of crazy makes no sense to me like click here like they click there it's insane to me yeah. you know like don't you think oh that's a virus or oh that's an ad or that's a you, you, people, they just they, they click it they, it makes no sense to me uh and so you're just asking them that, well you're telling them there's more 
So it's based on their own volition, their own intent that they would move to that. On the flip side, if you wanted them to do it or tried to suggest, so you're being slightly suggestive, more so making it their decision, which is good because it feels like they're in power of it. But let's say you wanted to actually suggest them to do something, to take action, to go to an event, to go somewhere. How would you do that on TikTok? Like you may not have done it before, or if you have, great. But what would be that type of a of, of a push? Because you can't just tell someone to do something. Yeah, that's just an act, um, and it's a bad one as well. Um, I would. We've done this, and we've, we're running an experiment right now, which is performing really well. Um, I would position it as like organic content. I would make it seem like the rest of the content on there. Let's say if I was wanting to go to an event, I would probably get someone who's not me, or I would do it myself and share a story and be like, "Hey, I I recently learned a tip from going to this event," and then pretty much tell it like a story. Almost or like, yeah, get some hype like, "Yo, we're about to go to this event. It's gonna be awesome." You know, it's just the fake fake till you make it. And because yeah. people want to belong, they want to follow their their uh, their uh, influencer. That's it's just they wanted they want to they live through their eyes almost. Yeah, I would all exactly. One one I recently saw, all the ads you'll see in the platform, if you do download it and scroll through, you'll see that you don't really tell that they're, they're promoted unless you look in the bottom left-hand corner where it says promotion. They almost position just like the rest of the organic content on TikTok. And that's what right. we're having success with right now. It's literally- The second it says promotion, everybody goes, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So you can't you can't even tell that it's an ad until you, oh, it is a promotion, but like they position them the exact same as a normal ad, but they just like, I watched one the other day where someone was like, I learned this massive tip from this newsletter. They shared the tip and they were like, I learned this from this newsletter. Go check it out. That was it. So they still gave the value up front with the same hook. But by the time someone's watching it, you can then be like, go check out this newsletter. So it's still the same. That's value interesting. Uh, I'm thinking in a sense for, for like this podcast or let's say my company's uh, marketing email. It's just like saying, I learned this from this and then, you know, having them subscribe to something. Give yeah. me your information or uh, with the podcast, like, you know, like I, I learned this from this podcast. I had this, this awesome conversation. Uh, th these tips came from this or whatever to get them to convert because they want to learn more things like that. Um, and just mentioning it, mentioning it and saying, this is what I got out of it. You can too. And then that, that, that gives them the drive to do it. That's really cool. And I think a lot of businesses could pull something like that. What about product? advertising or product uh showcasing products on TikTok because usually stuff that's about a product is very frowned upon no matter what the social media is yeah i haven't i haven't done it but i my one of my highest performing uh, uh TikToks of all time my personal channel was when i said hey here's three free sales tools that you can check out today i said proposify where i was working the time vidyard and then the last one i gave was like lavender the email writing tool sure. and it performed really well. So if I was going to do a product, I'd probably position it like that and get someone, pay someone else to say it for you basically, because that's like you mentioned, influencer. Right. Yeah. You don't want to talk about your own shit. No one cares. Some other things you can though, if it's anonymous, you could talk uh, about your own stuff. I've done this before uh, where it, it got a lot of engagement. I talked about the, my own stuff. And I talked about it in a way that was anonymous and just stated a problem and the state of how things were and how things need to change, like all that stuff. And then just uh, put, I just put a link at the bottom and that was it. Follow this link. Yeah. Because yeah. people don't want, yeah. As soon as someone feels like they're being sold a product, that's when they start doing that, right? Whereas, as you mentioned, if they feel like they're just being told about it, it's okay. Yeah, people will take a product suggestion any day and probably buy it. Like if I suggested a sandwich shop down the street from you that was life changing sandwich, and I told you about it, you would go there like that yeah. same thing, right? Or I like the next day. Or if you didn't like sandwiches, then you wouldn't. But that's like you know that's the other case scenario, right? But you would go now. If I told someone, hey, you, you know how many technologies I've recommended that people have adopted instantly? Meanwhile, <laughs> if I say you should use mine, they're like, oh well, I don't know. It, it, it's ridiculous. There you go. I, I, or, or honestly, if someone told me to 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 use, if the if the if the guy who owns the sandwich shops outside is going to the best sandwich shop, of course you're going to say that, right? It's that idea. But you're right. If you recommend a great sandwich shop in Halifax, yeah. Nova Scotia, I would hell go. Yeah, market validation from a third party. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. That's why testimonials work so well. What if you were to be a company posting testimonials of your clients on TikTok? Probably would not work there. This is almost the ad idea that I was mentioning earlier. So we've got, we did one where we got one of the SDRs and the Vidyard team to talk about why they like the sales feed, sales feed newsletter. 
And that's converting. Because we got a clip of someone saying something in a way that someone would say something on TikTok. And they were like, this newsletter is, I, I learned this tip this week and this newsletter is really good. We actually got people to convert from that. So like, obviously that's not a conversion to a sales conversation, but like we said, we're, we're above the funnel at this point. We're never like- That's so wild to me. I would never click a suggested content ever. Yeah. I don't get it. So who are the types of people who do click? So from the people who have been subscribing, because you can track that, let's say if they did subscribe to a newsletter, you actually have the real information. Yeah. What types of people are subscribing? Is it base level salespeople? Is it like base level marketers? Are you getting more like direct or man? Like, what does that look like? If you don't mind sharing, I don't know if that's too much to no, share. No, no. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an issue. For the ones who are really, who are identifying both on the inbound leads and actually speaking up, we're actually getting a lot of like team leads at this point. Like there's this idea that so people comment on thing are like, hey, I shared this with my team. And like, I'm hearing stories from people who are like, my sales manager showed your video for the team today on like a, a Sandler negative reversal that I, I did on my own personal thing. Oh, you gotta love negative reversals. Oh yeah, absolutely. Make them sell you. But <laughs> the um the whole, like, that, that sense I've seen a huge trend in is like these people, like you know this idea of dark social, like we're not seeing a lot of the convert the views and people who are seeing this. It's actually being grabbed and shared with their team like a resource. So we're seeing a lot of that, which is in both the inbound conversions of people who are signing up for newsletters and whatnot, but also the people who identify themselves in the comments, like, hey, I've been sharing this with my team, they loved it. I got one of the, I got two of those yesterday, in fact, uh, on the sales feed channel. So that's interesting. But they're that's almost always young though. I was, uh, what we got mentioned in some article that I had no idea that we were in. And people are like, oh, it came from this. I was like, what the hell are you talking yeah. about? What happens a lot as well, right? We didn't do anything with them. Like, what, what is, I don't even know what that website is. <laughs> you know, it, it happens. And people, you know, how do you get people to share? What is shareable content? How about that? That's a fantastic question because everybody goes, no one shares my content. No mm. one, well, no one comments. It means your content sucks. If no one <laughs> likes it, it means people don't care about you yet. And you yep. need to become more relevant. Now, if people don't share it, that is a much more difficult question is that it's not easy to make shareable content because the content could go like, you know, pretty much like, like micro viral and be really good and get a ton of engagement, yet no one shares it. Yeah. Well, good thing is TikTok tells you, the creator and everyone in the audience, how many times the videos have been shared. So if you want to check this out, you could easily go to sales feed and you'll see that we have some videos that get loads of likes but very few shares. And then ones that get like thousands upon thousands of shares. And generally the ones that are, are, are really shared are the ones that make people, um, make people, I would like to look one up now because I'm thinking one in particular, but I've noticed that people don't share the sales tips ones, but they share the really funny and relatable ones. Those are the ones that are like, oh, my buddy's got to see this. Like, or like, what do you mean by funny and relatable? Yeah. So I'll give you an example. I gave one, I did one yesterday where um, the, the the idea was it was like a skit almost, and I was like, oh, so does this? Um, and it's between a salesperson and a decision maker, and the salesperson says to the decision maker, "Is this the product you wanted?" And the decision maker goes, "Yeah, it is. That is the product I wanted." The salesperson goes, "Is it the price you wanted?" And the sales decision maker goes, "Yes, it's it's the price and the product I wanted." The salesperson goes. So would you like to get started? And then the decision. Uh, you know, I don't really want. I, I'm and, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, and then, like they ghost them, right? That got shared like heck because that happens to all. Set. That's that's super relatable, isn't it? Like we will, we know the reasons for that because you, you yeah, know. Yeah, no, that's. I can do a lot of stuff like that, man. One of my favorites, and you know, feel free to use this. I don't care. If you, uh, one of my favorites ever is. Uh, so what's the problem you're trying to solve? Oh, I'm trying to do this, 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 this. Okay, that sounds more like a uh, symptom, but sure. Uh, th this is like what's going on in my head. I'm not. This is not the actual conversation, of course. Shit, yeah, yeah. so if that's the case. But <laughs> then you talk to them about it. You walk them through it, discovery, and they say, "Well, I want, I want to do this. I want this solution. I want this product." And then you're you're like thinking to yourself, "This person does not need anything like this. They need that." But it's the endless battle between what it is they want and what they need. And they never align. I yeah. want this. This is what I need. And then you're just sitting there like, if I sell you this, I would be fucking irresponsible. You, you know, <laughs> it's it's insane. I've denied people what I sell because I'm like, you're looking for a lead gen database. Right. Like Zoom Info. But no, they're too expensive. 
then go to up lead. I don't fucking know what you. And then there's just like, well, why can't you generate me leads? I was like, I that's not. I don't generate leads. My company doesn't do that. It's like, well, why don't you? Because we're not in the lead gen business. I don't know. Like, <laughs> but it's like what they want, what they need. What they actually needed was us. But what yeah. they wanted was lead gen. And you know, the person fought me to the bitter end, saying that's what they needed. I said fine, and I gave them a referral to three different lead gen companies. Yeah, it's like if if I was if, when I used to sell proposal software, people come to me, but like. Hey, look, we're having problems. Our sales reps are sending the wrong documents to the clients. They're getting contracts from 2016 signed when we've got a new contract since 2019, right? I'm like, yeah. okay, wow, that's a big problem. How much does that cost me? They're like, they're doing that three times a month. We're probably putting $60,000 on the table and leaving that out there. I'm like, wow. So that's like, quick math, well, $720,000 a year. Our solution is 15 grand. Seems like a pretty good situation. Then I'm like, okay, so have you outlined any criteria that you're looking for in terms of the solution? How are you going to review this? He goes, yeah, yeah, we're going to want analytics. We're going to want a really nice uh, UI. Uh, we're going to, we're going to want why because that have nothing to do with controlling sales reps and making sure their documents are up to date. You know, they come in with those different. Literally, just have it so the date's variable. So whenever the person signs it, it puts the date on it. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like people have come in, but that's a very good relatable TikTok. People come in, they're like, I want something that can. They, they, what they need and what they want are very misaligned. That could be a good one for them. So yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I, I want to gain more followers, so I want to start putting out a shitload of advertising on social media. You yeah, know, that doesn't get you followers, right? Right. It's insanity. It's a, You need organic content. No, no, no. We don't like organic content because we feel like it's a waste because people don't interact with it. That's why you don't have followers. <laughs> it's 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 really funny. It's really we funny. Tried, we tried that for a week last year. It didn't work. Um, yeah, no, yeah, trying it for a week. I had a conversation with Tony Peck about that. It's like people use social media for a month, they don't get engagement, and then think it doesn't work for them, and that that, that it's a piece of shit. And meanwhile, it's like, well, it, it took you seven years to establish your business and get a client base that's relatively small. You think that, sure, social media is faster, but you think that in one month that you're going to have a massive following when it took you to, to, to create your business seven years. I mean, come on. Yeah, except for TikTok, because you can grow a massive following there very quickly. We had a 30,000 followers after two months of doing sales. Here, so. Damn, I got to start doing that shit. Yeah. Uh, everybody who's listening, start doing it like today. My God. <laughs> and then that leads to the next segment here is that if anybody if anybody listening to this were to forget everything that we just talked about, what is the one thing you'd want them to walk away with? And remember to apply to their business today because it will help them beyond belief. When you look at LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever, those platforms were new ones. And right now, TikTok is an opportunity where you'd still be early if you were a B2B brand jumping on TikTok. And the value of being early is sometimes more than putting out quality content. Just being early to a platform can be powerful. John Barrows, he still puts a lot to his content, his, his success down to just being an early user of LinkedIn. Don't you wish you'd been on Instagram in 2009? Like I was. That they, you know, like I made an Instagram account two weeks after it came out. I had the original Rob Turley account, and then I got banned. Yeah, <laughs> don't you wish? Don't you wish you bought Bitcoin before? In in in, for, it, you know, I can't even remember when Bitcoin came out. I had a hundred Bitcoin when it was twelve dollars a coin. That, right. The value of being early to something and betting on it is worth the risk that it might be not be a thing in two years' time because it could be the biggest thing in 10 years. And if you're early... It, it was stupid. Like, I had like uh, you know, a couple hundred Bitcoin and uh, I traded it to someone for like a couple hundred bucks because I thought I had no chance. I was like, this shit's worthless. Yeah. And uh, oh my God, there'll be millions now. I felt, I feel, looking back at it, I think the only regret that I have is giving up that Bitcoin because I was just going to leave it in a wallet and forget about it. Yeah. So... Yeah. Be early, take the risk, bet on it, because there's more and more people growing on TikTok and B2B is slow to adopt stuff, but you could actually be fast to adopt something if you jump on it today. Yeah, that's good advice. And you got me to want to do it. I've been thinking about it for the past like four months, should have just done it. And, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm just stubborn. Uh, now, second thing is where can people find you and what's the best place to get in touch? LinkedIn's my... Uh, my, my place as well as TikTok. On TikTok, just search Will Aiken. On LinkedIn, just search Will Aiken. It's a sales feed. Can you um, DM people on TikTok? If you're friends with them. Okay, so you have to friend. Oh, so they have a friend thing too? That if you follow someone back, you become friends and then you can share videos between each other. Oh, so mutual follow equals friendship. Gotcha. Exactly. That's good to know. 
Okay. So awesome. Awesome. That's great. And again, like, thank you so much for coming out of the show and explaining this. I know it was kind of like TikTok for dummies with, with a lot of uh, ridiculous questions. It's, it was fun. Uh, it's, it's awesome talking about these things because uh, you got, you got me thinking about causal actions now about my personal profile. So uh, ah. you gave me something that's probably going to be much more valuable. So thank you. Absolutely. No problem. And you gave me the drive to want to do it. So I appreciate that. Now, everybody, thank you so much for listening to the show. Uh, again, this is Down the Rabbit Hole Podcast. This is Rob Turley, your host. This is brought to you by White Rabbit Intel. Hyper-target your market and predict who's most likely to become your next best customer so you can know exactly who to sell to before reaching out. Thank you so much. Have a good night. And if you ever share this, please use hashtag DTRH Podcast. If you tag either Will or myself, we will always engage and uh, comment back, right? We'll help share your content. And uh, it's always helpful to us. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this episode, follow Down the Rabbit Hole Podcast for new episodes weekly on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Pandora, and YouTube. If you'd like to apply to be featured on the podcast or recommend a featured guest, please feel free to email us at the team at whiterabbitintel.com.